Hey you guys welcome back to the channel physics surgery and here we are in physics surgery quickie series in which i bring forward to you some short uh, concepts and sweet problem solving skills and i rightfully call them as the fast food for thought and i am confident that this is one fast food that is not harmful for the students okay so we are going to look at a old olympiad problem in which there are four runners and there is some chasing meeting etc happening on a level track and uh, we are going to look at an unconventional way of solving the problem involving one school geometry theorem that you would have uh recollected okay so let's try to see the problem statement so the method is more important than the answer here so i would like you to pause the video here have a go at the question that is written on the top along with the hint at the bottom uh try to solve it for 3 to 4 minutes and do come back for the complete explanation of the problem along with two practice problems on a similar concept to top it off okay so here we go with the formal wording four runners a b c d are sprinting uniformly along a straight level track not necessarily along the same direction a overtakes b c and d at 8 am 9 am and 10 am respectively d crosses b and c at 12 noon and 2 pm respectively using this information you are supposed to find at what time on clock does b overtake c okay there are four options on the clock that are given which you are supposed to estimate and during this problem the word overtake means that it's happening in the same direction between two runners and the word crossing implies that the two people are crossing each other in opposite direction <clears throat> okay so i hope you have given it a fair try let's move forward and try to see the unconventional method the conventional method would have been to take this linear motion write some equations and then try to solve for the time instants that are uh, given in the question to finally reach the answer so i'm not going to look at that so we are going to actually plot a graph of all these four runners that are mentioned in the question okay so remember 8 am is the lowest amount of time so i'll start that as my t equal to 0 on the t axis can you see at the bottom so that t is equal to 0 is actually 8 am in my graph okay and runner a and b since they are overtaking one another <clears throat> uh, they should be having same speed on this position versus time graph so i'll have a same slope that is positive but uh, since runner a is crossing b you are going to have a greater slope for him and this is runner b's graph okay <clears throat> runner a is going to cross c later that means the c is moving in the same direction right he is overtaking him uh, and but he should have a lesser speed so slightly less positive slope but he's also mentioned that uh, d actually crosses c and b and also a at later stages in the problem so the d's motion should happen in the opposite direction so to con conclude a b c are moving in one direction let's say towards the right d is moving towards left to cross people okay right so that's why the d's graph which is drawn in yellow is drawn with a negative slope so taking the information from the question that a actually crosses or overtakes b at 8 am i called it as 0 uh, then uh, it it overtakes c at a 9 am in, on the clock which is one hour away from it so on my t axis i'll mark everything in hours okay so this is one hour okay and also uh, he is going to cross d at 10 am cross d that means this meeting point between the graph of a and d should happen at 2 hours on this scale that's that means this is 10 am like that if i mark the rest of the hours that are given i'll get a 4 and a 6 on the graph paper so the thing that he has asked us is to calculate when b and c meeting happens and the b and c meeting is this graph line and this graph line so this is my position on the time graph that i am supposed to find given this 1 2 4 and 6 okay so there is a very beautiful theorem from our school geometry where if i have a triangle look at this oab triangle and i have a line cutting through it internally and externally you can write the ratio of proportions of these cut lines using a theorem called as menelaus theorem okay so this is the menelaus theorem from school geometry where you have a triangle abc and you have a line cutting that triangle two sides internally and the third side externally then the ratio of these corresponding sides so let's start with b 
okay a vertex then bd divided by da you keep going in the same sense okay af divided by fc but when you are going to the third side you have to go from ch divided by hp because h is now touching externally this is the extra term right and some people actually write this as minus 1 because they go from ch and they come back right but these are magnitudes that's why we didn't include the minus sign the th proof of this theorem if you can recollect is very simple and is based on similar triangles you just need to draw a dotted line parallel to df and use similar triangles to get to this answer so let's try to search for a triangle and a line in this problem okay you could choose many triangles and one line so what i am going to do is i am going to choose oab as my triangle and this blue color line can you see pqr uh, where p and q are internal points of the triangle and r is the external point on the triangle as my menlas theorem triangle <clears throat> okay so let me shorten the diagram so i have pulled the diagram out shortened it and now i'm going to use the required ratio triangle oab can you see the white vertices okay right just keep that in your mind is cut by the line pqr can you see pq and r therefore i'll go in the same sense start at o op look at the left side of the figure okay op divided by pa a r divided by rb remember it you need to start from the vertex of the triangle go to the point of intersection and come back and then you are here bq divided by qo that's what i have written the product of these three ratios should be one now here comes another genius trick actual op divided by pa we don't know because these lengths on the graph paper are immaterial they don't have physical significance instead of taking op by pa actual length i'll project these points onto the x axis or the t axis i should say and take the ratios along the projections okay so using projections along t axis op by pa is this length by this length because it's the same slope okay so 1 by 1 then ar by rb ar is here can you see ar so the entire projection of a to r on the time axis is a four units divided by rb's projection onto the time axis is two so that's why i have a four by two on similar lines bq's projection is this number which is x four minus x and then you have qo's projection which is this x itself so solving for this x comes out to be eight by three hours which is Two hours and forty minutes later, as compared to the t equal to zero. So this time on the clock can be easily ascertained to be ten forty a.m. That's your answer. I think some of the people have answered it correctly. Okay, so let's move on to the practice problems now. Okay, <clears throat> the first one again the application of graph that I would like you to uh, go through with. There are two parts to the problem. Okay, so the first part read this one on your own. and then move on to the second part which is the continuation of the first one okay so here you have two ships moving on a uh, calm sea in the part 1 where they are carrying postal mail and they meet at the middle and they exchange the mail and come back to their respective stations and this keeps on happening and there will be some time taken for the each of these ships starting from station a and station b to do the journey you're supposed to determine some things in this particular problem using graph that would be more encouraging second problem is a pre, pre, uh, problem where the speed of the ships with respect to water even though the same there is a river current that is moving that is the water is moving therefore there would be a small change that would happen okay so try both of these comment your answers below along with the time stamp and in case you struggle i'll take up the solution of this problem again in the physics search quickies okay all right let's move on to the problem 2 this is a practice problem 2 uh, this is from pathfinder solutions okay 17th problem so again three people walking on straight track a b and c go ahead and read the question on your own and again he is also requesting you to do that using a graph and this is the diagram that was mentioned for your convenience okay so comment your answer again here along with the time stamp for the function that you have for a, uh, as a function of time here okay i right. don't forget the time stamp it will be easy for me to respond and there was also another uh, nice solution for a check your understanding 19 problem from pathfinder kinematics again 
which has a less seen uh, solution, right? So this, again, I tried to solve it long time back using the graph to instill that kind of an idea in, among the students. Unfortunately, it's a less seen video. I don't know why it is so. Maybe students skipped it because they didn't want to go inside that. But I would urge you to go through that video also. The link of it is in the description below and on the I button above, so, right? So just happy surfing through that. And in case you want to have more mind-bending kinematics problems, which are part of our Discord server, please do join our Discord server. So, and uh, also keep checking the community tab of this channel. I've been posting the QOTD's question of the days, right? And uh, we, uh, there was a nice participation that's happening. Creators are increasing day by day. So please make sure you are also part of this genuine student batch who are preparing for their exams, okay? In case you don't know what is a Discord server, I have already made a video tutorial on how to use our physics surgery with Discord server, why it is helpful and all. So please watch that video, link of which is in the description below or on the I button above, right? And uh, I'll see you there, right? And also, apart from the physics surgery quickies, there are many uh, more series that are parallelly running in this channel. At this point of time, 220 plus uh, quality videos have been already produced. So in case you are JE aspirant especially, I would urge you to watch two or three videos per day uh, at 1.2x speed, maybe to finish off the things uh, that will definitely give you an edge for the JE advanced preparation over others. Okay, so in case you have liked this video, please do give it a like, liked videos, get propagated more quickly. So please ensure that you show your love by liking it. And also do share the content and it keeps me motivated to produce more videos per week. I'll try to increase the frequency if there is a genuine response for the videos. Okay, so, and also in case you have not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe and also hit the notification bell icon because of the community tab post that I've been, I'll be putting up daily so that you get that problem immediately once I post it in the community tab. Okay, so uh, thanks for staying this long and see you in the next uh, awesome video. Bye.